We have a customer that sent a WhatsApp message inquiring about a repair. And I would advise not to leave WhatsApp messages for repair inquiries because chances are I'm not going to see your message. But I did click on this one and I read it. And the reason I do not read WhatsApp messages is because we have hundreds of them every single day. If I want to reply to every single person, I would not be done in six months. When I'm in the shop, I'm working. When I go home, I spend it with the family along with all the other stuff that I do, video editing, ordering, and all that stuff. So I rarely have time to reply to messages. However, I do reply every once in a while, especially if the first line interests me. And that's why I clicked on that message. It was a repair inquiry, and the customer had an image. So the customer attached this image here, and he's asking if we can fix this connector for this board. I do not know what that board is. Let me read the message quick. Hello, sir. I got your contact from your website, Northbridge Fix. Is this something you can solder? If so, I can come by tomorrow. Carlos. I replied back and I said, yes, we can do it. I told them the price and I gave them the new address that we are in right now. He said, sounds good. I'll drop it in tomorrow. I told them, if you want to come in tomorrow, on that day, on Friday, I was here from 3 to 4 only. Anyway, he dropped it in and he left the envelope outside the door. It's a good thing somebody did not take it. And I responded back and I said, we got your package. And the customer left the board and the wire inside an Amazon package. That's how the board looks like, along with the wire, with the cable. I do not know what that board is, but it looks like it's some type of a keypad. Let's take a look quick. Bird home automation motherboard. I do not know if the customer can source another board like this, but he wants it fixed. And if you look at the connector here, it should be doable. Three rib pads, actually five rib pads, two supporting pads, left and right, and we have three pads here. The support pad Left and right are not connected to any voltage lines, no data lines. They're just there to support the connector. So when you plug in and plug out the cable, the connector does not rip off the board. I mean, the connector ripped off anyway, even with the support pads. So we're going to tell the customer to be careful when he plugs and unplugs that cable. We're going to restore this to that trace right here. We're going to restore this pin to this trace right here. It broke from here. And we're going to restore this one to this wire right here. Straightforward, right? This one looks good. Meter and diode mode. Let's do some measurements. We have a 0 0.44 voltage drop. The connection is all the way to here. And what is this? One of them should be ground, and this is the ground pad right here. And we have 0 0.713 here. And this line is going somewhere. I do not know where that line is going. It doesn't matter, but it's not going here. This line is going right here. So we're going to have to run. We're going to have to restore this pad, this pad, this pad. And those are big pads, so we cannot use our pad strips to restore this. We're going to have to use a custom wire. Apply the wires here, solder each wire to its respected pads. Then we're going to solder the connector, and everything should be good. What can we do to secure that connector? We can probably glue the sides, one and two. But before I do so, I want to run the wires here. And we want to remove the broken pads off from the pins. I do not want to melt that plastic connector, so we have to be gentle. We're going to use NF dot flux. And I mentioned in yesterday's video, the flux is back in stock. 
you can log in to northbridgefix.com, click on shop, add to cart, check out, pay, and we almost always ship out same day. We carry most of the tools that we use on our bench here. Everything from soldering wire, the NF dot mini solder pan, which is the one I'm gonna be using here, the flux, multimeter soldering station, thermal camera, one-stop shop. Fume extractor on. And 100% you need a fume extractor. Do not work without a fume extractor because health is number one. Now what we're going to do is use a CAD5 cable. Or I can use our 0.1 millimeter wire, but it may be too thin for the pads. A CAD5 cable would do better. And what I want to do is strip one of the wires on that CAT5 cable. And we're gonna use the stripper here. This one is a stripper that we carry and sell on our site since like six years ago. I'm still using the same one from six years ago. Right here. Okay, perfect. And we're going to use the NF dot mini. I just need one of the wires. We do not need to combine. For this one, maybe we can use a longer one. And then I can bend the edges. Let me just do one more and then we can fix the second one. And we are done with the CAT5 cable. Now we can focus on the board. Look at how nicely solder sticks onto the tip. Those are the special tips that we have along with the NF dot mini. Yeah, and this one is solid, we do not need to touch it. It looks like a car. Look at this. We just need tires on the bottom and you have a car. We're gonna have to charge the customer more for this. We drew a car for him. We do not make art for free. I wanna tend the wires. And we're gonna paint that car for the customer. Paint cost extra also. I'm sure the customer will appreciate it. Now, if we look at the connector, we removed the pads from pin one, two, and three. This one here was empty by default. And that will tell us the orientation of the connector. So pin one, the connector should go like this and not like this, okay? has to go like this because it can be done both ways but one way is right and the other way is wrong now I'm gonna unplug that cable because it's gonna be in the way
I can fix a board but cannot unplug a cable. I did. Now it's time to use glue. Because right now if we solder the four legs, only one of them is solid and the rest are loose. So that whole connector is gonna be loose. I mean, once the customer connects the cable, he should not remove that cable anymore because that connector, the support is weak. We're going to try to make it as tough as possible by applying glue here, apply glue here, and then we're going to solder it. Maybe after the glue heals, I can add hot glue on the edge of the connector just to support it more. But I would not recommend that the customer take that cable out again once it's plugged in, if possible. Or just be careful. Let me grab glue. I'll be back. Okay, so we're going to apply glue. I have Gorilla Glue here from Lowe's or Home Depot. What makes this glue special? It doesn't matter. You just want glue. We're not gluing a granite countertop to a cabinet. We're not doing a kitchen. Just a small connector, any glue would do. Do not overthink it. So what I like to do is cut a cotton swab at an angle so we can have a sharp edge like this. See, we have a sharp edge now. Squeeze the bottle and take a tiny bit. and just apply it on the pads, left and right. We're gonna put the connector and hold, oh, you missed it. Okay, so I applied the glue to the left and right pad you can see the glue on the side here. That's all I did. And the glue is still soft. I do not know how long it will take to harden, but usually a few hours. I'm gonna solder the pins in the front. For now, I just wanna hold for like maybe a minute. Then we can let go, solder the front while being careful because the glue will take a while to heal. It's not instant. I do not want to apply flux now, so flux does not interfere with the glue. But maybe I can apply a tiny bit of solder on pin number one, so we can make that connector even more solid while that glue heals. I want to put the cap back on the glue, so we do not waste it. And you have to know how to close the cap with one hand. You have to be Superman to do this. Can we apply solder without flux, just for the time being? I'm going to apply flux to my soldering iron, just like that. And fume extractor on. Okay, good. I was able to do it. And maybe I can apply a tiny bit of flux right here, right here and right here. This should not interfere with the glue. We did a great job. Flux did not interfere with our glue. and I do not want alcohol to interfere with the glue also. I'll clean this up when glue hardens, but for now I want to measure, make sure all the pads are making a good connection. We know the second pad is ground, and all the three pads had a diode reading, so meter in diode mode. One probe on ground, and we should have a reading here. 0.704, perfect. 
We have a reading of 0 0.704. We have a ground here. And we have 0 0.436 here. Perfect. Okay, measure from here to here. Make sure they're not connecting by mistake. And of course, this is not going to be connecting with this because the diet reading is different. Now, as soon as the glue hardens, I'm going to clean up. I'll attach the cable and let the customer know that we finished his device. The customer will probably watch the video today. I'll send him a message and I'll upload the video today. We got the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video. And that's the cable. I'm not going to plug in the cable right now. Thank you.